Hi everyone, this lesson is on the complications of trichomoniasis, an STD that's often not talked about. We'll first talk about what trichomoniasis is and some of the more common symptoms of this infection, and then we'll discuss the complications later. So trichomoniasis is a sexually transmitted infection, or STI. More specifically, it's an infection with the parasitic protozoa known as trichomonas vaginalis. So this is what trichomonas vaginalis looks like. So what happens is in individuals who get infected with this particular organism, they're going to have irritation and damage to tissues. So most of the time, females will be more affected than males. Most of the time, males are going to be asymptomatic, whereas about 50% of females will be asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms at all. So there'll be 50% of females that have symptoms. And the reason is because this organism leads to irritation and damage to certain parts of the female reproductive tract. It can irritate and cause issues with the vulva, vagina, cervix, and even other parts of the female reproductive tract. And in males, oftentimes this organism can reside in the prostate gland, so that's where it can reside. Now, because this is a sexually transmitted infection, the risk factors for getting it include high-risk sexual activity, so unprotected sexual activities and having multiple sexual partners are going to be risk factors for getting this particular infection, and it's estimated to affect 1-3% to of the population. Now, some of the more common symptoms of this particular infection include vaginal discharge. So the vaginal discharge is often going to be green or yellow in coloration. Sometimes there can be a bit of blood. It's going to be often described as thin and frothy. There can be vaginal odor. So oftentimes it's going to be quite smelly. It can be described as musty or fishy smell. And then there can also be vulval vaginal irritation. So the vulva, the vagina can be both irritated and also can be a bit inflamed as well. So individuals are often going to describe a burning sensation or they may experience some itching sensation as well. And as you see, these symptoms will occur in biological females. And as mentioned before, 50% of biological females will have symptoms of this infection, whereas almost all males will have no symptoms at all. But what's important is that even though males may not have symptoms, or even the females that don't have symptoms, they can also experience complications. And this is what's going to be important when talking throughout this lesson. Individuals who have symptoms are often going to be better off because they can be treated for this infection, whereas the others that don't know they have this and don't have symptoms can still have the complications. We'll talk about those as we go through this lesson. So one of the most important complications we can see that's going to occur in females is pelvic inflammatory disease. So this is a potential complication of trichomonas infections in females. It's where the organism essentially travels upward. It ascends up the genital urinary system. So it moves up the female reproductive tract. So it starts to infect other pelvic structures. So other pelvic structures become infected and inflamed. Some of the signs and symptoms that we can see with pelvic inflammatory disease include lower abdominal pain, especially right lower quadrant pain. So that's going to be in the lower right part of the abdomen. We can see pelvic pain, and we can also see fever and nausea and vomiting as well. So patients with pelvic inflammatory disease can become quite sick. Now, what is found on scans would be what we call tubo ovarian abscesses. So that can be something that can be found as well. And even in patients who don't have acute symptoms, there can be chronic lower abdominal and pelvic pain. So they can experience chronic pain as well. Another potential complication that we can see in biological females is cervical neoplasia. So there is an increased risk of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or cervical cancer in patients who have trichomonas. Now, this is especially true with co-infections with human papillomavirus or HPV, especially the more high-risk HPVs like HPV-16 and HPV-18. But having said that, trichomonas is itself an independent risk factor for cervical cancer as well. And the reason is because trichomonas damages cervical cells. And it has been found that trichomonas infections double the risk of cervical cancer. So this is, again, especially true in those with HPV infections as well. And can occur especially because the risk factors for getting trichomonas infections are going to increase the risk of HPV infections. So those unprotected sexual activities especially. So this is all very important in trichomonas infections. Some other important complications of a trichomonas infection include infertility in both females and males who have trichomonas infections. And this is going to be due to trichomonas-induced damage to female reproductive tract and also changes to sperm structure and function in males. So what can happen is 
we can get scarring in the female reproductive tract. You can imagine that if you have the ovaries here, if you look in this image here, you have the ovaries, they're releasing an egg into the fallopian tubes. If you have scarring in the fallopian tubes, that egg might not be able to pass properly through the fallopian tubes. Or if you have scarring in the uterus itself, that egg will not be able to implant properly. So then we have reduced fertility. Now, in males, we can have changes to the structure of sperm. So the head of the sperm can be altered, and we can also see changes to the tail of sperm. So that can reduce the motility of the sperm, reducing fertility. So we can see both males and females being affected with reduced fertility. We can also see pregnancy issues. So even if a female is able to get pregnant, they can have a higher risk of pregnancy-related complications, especially in those who are currently infected with trichomonas. Now, some of the complications can include a low birth weight. So when they do deliver their infant, the infant has a lower birth weight than they should. There can be premature delivery, and there can be a premature rupture of membranes as well. So there's these potential complications that can occur in patients that are pregnant who are infected with trichomonas. We can also see a Bertholin's gland abscess being something that can occur in patients who are infected with trichomonas vaginalis. So this is where there's an infection and inflammation of the Bertholin's gland. So this can actually become so enlarged that it may obstruct the vaginal introitus, the opening of the vagina. And it's very sore and painful and a fever can occur in more severe cases. We can also see post-op complications. So post-operative complications are also something that can occur in female patients who are currently infected with trichomonas. So this is where we can get post-hysterectomy complications especially. So we can get what we call cuff cellulitis and abscess. So there can be infection of part of the, the vagina after hysterectomy surgery. And the wound site can also become infected as well. There's a higher risk of wound site infection in those who have trichomonas infections. Now, individuals who have trichomoniasis are also at a higher risk for other STIs as well. So there is an increased risk of other STIs, and there's multiple reasons for this. So some of them are due to the fact that unprotected sexual activity increases the risk of trichomoniasis, so it would increase the risk of other STIs as well. But not only that, it is also because the individual who has trichomoniasis has a disrupted mucosal barrier. We talked about the fact that those trichomonas organisms can irritate and damage the mucosa and some of the other structures of the genital urinary system. So they can decrease our protective barrier that's one reason. And the other is that an individual that is co-infected with an STI, so if they have trichomonas vaginalis or they have trichomoniasis and they're co-infected with another STI, they're more likely to shed more of that other STI virus or bacteria. So individuals, again, if they have trichomoniasis are more likely to end up getting another STI or if they have an STI, they're more likely to shed in infect other people. So there's multiple reasons for why we can see higher risks or higher prevalence rates of STIs in people who have trichomoniasis. Now this is important for particular STIs especially. We see a doubling of the risk of HIV in individuals who have trichomoniasis due to those same factors we talked about before. And the individuals who do have trichomoniasis and also HIV have a higher HIV viral burden. So they're more likely to have not had a proper barrier to an HIV infection. They're exposed to more HIV and they end up becoming more infected with it if they have trichomoniasis. So that's also important to point out here. And there's an association with increased frequency of HPV infection and reactivation. This is the reason why we can see a higher risk of cervical cancer in individuals who have trichomoniasis infection. So the trichomonas organisms are likely, again, disrupting that protective barrier that we have in our reproductive system. And if those patients are exposed to HPV, they're more likely to become infected with it because of that reduced protective barrier. And they're also more likely to have a reactivation of HPV virus. So all of this increases our risk for cervical cancer, especially in those who are co-infected. So very, very important. Now in males, we can see prostatitis being something that can occur, especially with prolonged infection. So there's prostate inflammation. That's what prostatitis means. Now, again, this is rare in males because males are less likely to have symptoms. But again, this is something that can occur, especially with a prolonged infection. And there can either be acute prostatitis or chronic prostatitis. Chronic prostatitis is more common than acute prostatitis. But if we have acute prostatitis, we can have signs and symptoms like fever, 
myalgias, more systemic symptoms. And with chronic prostatitis, we can see male patients having issues with erectile dysfunction or painful ejaculation. Now, with regards to epididymitis, that is something else that can occur in male patients. So epididymitis is an inflammation of the epididymis. So the epididymis is in the back of the scrotum. It's where sperm is stored. And this epididymitis can occur in males, although again, this is also rare, but it is something that can happen. And what we can see is that there can be scrotal pain and fever. So if a patient has epididymitis, they're going to have scrotal pain and fever. And then finally, males can also get urethral stricture disease. So what can happen is, we've talked about this throughout the lesson, trichomonas organisms can cause inflammation, but because they can cause inf inflammation, they can cause subsequent scarring. So they can scar some of these structures, including the corpus spongiosum of the penis. What this can do is that this can lead to it. the diameter of the urethral lumen or the urethral opening. It can cause that diameter to decrease. So this is essentially the main part of this particular disease, urethral stricture disease. Now, male patients can be asymptomatic. They may not have any symptoms at all if they have a urethral stricture disease. But if they do have symptoms or if there is significant decreases in the diameter of their urethral lumen, they can have symptoms like obstructive voiding symptoms. So there may be a difficulty to get started in urination or there may be intermittent urine stream. When they're urinating, they may essentially have this urine stream kind of decrease and increase in an intermittent fashion. There can also be an increased risk of UTIs in males. Generally, males have a lower risk of UTIs, but if they have urethral stricture disease, they have a higher risk because the st structure of the urethra has changed, and this can allow organisms to proliferate and cause infection easier. And finally, there can also be, in more severe cases, urinary retention, where essentially we have the lumen of the urethral or the opening of the urethra essentially block or close off completely. So there can be urinary retention. The individual cannot even urinate properly. So that is going to be something that we can see in some individuals who have trichomoniasis as well, urethral stricture disease. Please check my other lessons on trichomoniasis. If you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated, please also consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.